Welcome to Beyond the Pod, presented by SodaStick.com. Brunette, he moves, Brunette back in, he scores! Minnesota has upset the Colorado Avalanche! Andrew Brunette, the game-winning goal! Here are your hosts, the second greatest scorer in Gopher hockey history, Pat Micheletti. And the second greatest hockey analyst on this podcast, Brandon Molesky. All right. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Pod. I'm Brandon Molesky. Pat, Le- Pat Micheletti with me as always. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Brandon. As always, uh, Beyond the Pod is brought to you by SodaSick.com. We haven't had someone up from the Iron Range on the on the podcast in a long time, Pat. So we had to go back up into that area. And uh, Scott Sandlin, the head coach of the Minnesota Duluth men's hockey team, joins us now. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, you bet. I, 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 with, with the Olympics being in Beijing, I don't know how much you've had a chance to catch the uh, United States men's hockey team with all you know the timing of the games being weird, and you got your own thing going on. But have you been able to watch them at all? And you've been able to watch Noah Cates? Uh, a little bit, yeah. You know, I mean, their schedule is a little crazy with when they were playing. So uh, I think their first game we were traveling to Denver and couldn't catch it, but I did watch last night's game. Unfortunately, it didn't go uh, our way. So um, tough to see because they had it's tough to figure out. You go through a tournament, you don't lose a game, but you're out. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so we're just kind of waiting to hear when we're going to get those guys back. But I thought they, uh, they did a great job. I mean, I thought their, their team played very well. And, you know, again, uh, it's, it's tough to see them come home without, uh, you know, getting an opportunity to get a medal. Must have been a proud moment when one of your players was named alternate captain of that team. Yeah, for sure, Pat. I mean, he's he's been a leader for us, obviously, a two-time captain here. But just I think just you watch him, the way he plays, he, uh, like I always say, he kind of epitomizes our program, the way he plays. He's, he's such a competitive player, um, great teammate, uh, doesn't care where he plays in the lineup, gives you everything he's got every night, got great work habits, and – and even most importantly, he's just a great person. And, and I think uh, it was pretty cool to see him be one of the only guys, you know, the only college guy, you know, wearing a letter uh, on the Olympic team. Hey, wh- what's it like, um, you know, you've been in these situations hundreds of times, mm-hmm. but, you know, going into a game like that, um, you think you're well prepared. You probably are well prepared. You know, the, the guys are. What's going on inside of you, the coach? going into a game like that? Uh, you know, that's always, you know, you're always nervous because they're basically they're one game shots, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's no different than you get to the NCAA tournament. And um, you, usually usually in our case, uh, from, from the college side of it, you know, you pretty much know where your team is at, right? And mm-hmm. your biggest thing is you're not going to go over coach. You're going to let your kids play and, you know, deal with the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs, momentum swings of the games and, and let your players kind of get through that. And, you know, I think in a short tournament, you know, when they've only played three games, you know, you're still kind of fine in your team, but, you know, they yeah. certainly progressed. But um, I think they were in a pretty good spot. I think it was a good game. Um, you know, again, you look at opportunities and, and uh, in those games, and it's it's no different than any other game. You know, they had some opportunities to, to score on the power play. They had some opportunities missed. And, and you look back at that and, you know, again, you let certain teams, and I heard it last night, I think after the game, you know, you let teams hang around um, and you don't kind of finish them off. Uh, you put yourself in those positions. But, you know, those games are expected to be that way. They're good teams. Uh, they're at that stage of the tournament. So, um, you know, it's going to be that way. But it, it's certainly nerve-wracking until the game starts, <laughs> I think, because yeah. you, know, you never know. Um, but, uh, you know, I think they had a great coaching staff and, and, uh, I don't think that really had any bearing on the game. It's just the way some games play out. That being said, you've kind of had a lot of success in, in that type of one game scenario, right? If you look at the course of your career, mm-hmm. you've been coaching, what, 21, 22 years. You've had a lot of good teams, but you've never won a regular season championship. Yet come playoff time, you've won three national titles. You've mm-hmm. you know, been to four Frozen Fours recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what is it about that one game scenario that you've kind of you've, you've, you've figured out a little bit? Well, uh, well, thanks for reminding me. I haven't won a regular season championship, <laughs> but uh, um, no, we've been in the hunt. We've What's wrong hunt. with you? <laughs> I thought I was complimenting him. Well, I think we all know that's certainly at any conference that's the most difficult to win because of the games you play and how tough your conferences are. But you know, again, you know, when you get into that, you know, we've been in 
my whole career, it's either been the WCHA or now the NCHC. And you've got great teams. And, and uh, to, to me, finishing in the top part of that league, whether it was the WCHA or the NCHC, is, you know, trying to get home ice and be one of those top three or four teams is, is really important. But, uh, you know, again, it's, you know, the ultimate goal for me in, in our program is to be one of the 16 teams at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, you've got to have a good, uh, a good season. You've got to have a good non-conference record. You got to fare well, hopefully being in the upper part of your league. And, and when you do that, you get a chance to maybe be one of those teams. And uh, we've done it a lot of different ways. Um, you know, we've snuck in, we we've been solid, um, but just for whatever reason, you know, when you get to that point, it's, uh, you know, you got to win four games and uh, you just take it a game at a time. And I think the biggest thing I've tried to impress upon our players is that you don't have to be perfect every game when you get to that point. And I think some some guys think you got to play such a perfect game every time. And that's really hard to come by no matter what game you're playing. So I think just trying to get our guys to focus on, uh, you know, kind of the short term things and, and living with the the ebbs and flows of the game and Fortunately, we've had some guys that have gone through that and had success. So that was a big part of, uh, you know, us continuing that because they've been in those situations and um, and you need a little bit of luck. There's no question. Right. Um, again, the, the team at the end of the year necessarily is ne not necessarily always the best team in the country. Um, but, you know, I've been fortunate to be a part of some at North Dakota uh, before I came to Duluth and here. And, and uh, the one thing I, the one thing that's consistent is that, uh, you, you have to have a good team. You know, you have to have a team uh, that uh, that's really together and bought into what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, sp speaking of the NCHC and where you guys are at right now, you could finish anywhere from second to sixth or seventh, really. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's really mm -hmm. tight. The next few weeks are going to be huge. Uh, you, you've got a four-point lead on St. Cloud for the, mm -hmm. for the, for fourth place right now. Um, they have two in hand, obviously you have a makeup game and then you get them at your place, but mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a big couple weeks coming up. <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at just, it's not just our team, you look at kind of the, the gauntlet they've gone through. I think it seems right. like everybody goes through it. I mean, obviously we are you know, playing the Tuesday game with them and going to Denver and then having North Dakota yeah. here and then turning around and playing St. Cloud again and going to Miami and the way they've played at home. Uh, you know, they just swept the Omaha, gave Denver everything they can handle. We've played them earlier in the year and then finishing with two, you know, again with St. Cloud here. So right. obviously there's a little separation from one, two, three. Um, but, you know, again, it seems like uh, it could be us and them battling for that home ice spot. But like you say, Patty, you don't know. And uh, yeah. obviously we're, we're going to get some players back. They're going to get some players back heading down the stretch here. And obviously it'll make the games more interesting, but you know, we've got a weekend here that uh, we're playing a team that, you know, is ahead of us and we have an opportunity to, to, to grab some points here and, and try and build off uh, the win we had at Denver on Saturday. I, I remember, I think it was a couple of years ago, um, you guys were in first place. You and I were having a conversation and I said, mm -hmm. you know, boy, I, I think, you know, you guys are really playing well. And, and you said to me, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. We're getting there, but we're not there yet. And I'm like, okay, I must be watching a different game. Um, uh, that being said, <laughs> um, are you, are you, is your, is your team starting to get to where you want it to get to? Um, at this stage of the season? Uh, no, actually, you know what? We, we just seem to, you know what? Pat? I, I just feel like we we start to get a little traction and then some, something goes wrong, right? I mean, it's, uh, you know, I thought we played uh, three pretty good games against two against Western and even the Tuesday in St. Cloud. And, yep. you know, we come out of that and, and we have Dom James get hurt. And then, uh, you know, obviously we're missing Noah, but, you know, Dom's, Dom's a big part of our team He's and, a good player. and, you know, then Friday we lose a Wyatt Kaiser and we don't play with him and Dom on, on the weekend. And, and just, I know teams go through it, but it just seems like it's been every time we, we kind of get going, there's, there's a setback <laughs> and um, you got to, but again, that's part of the year. It's just like I was saying, there's ebbs and flows to games. It's same yeah. part of the season, you know, part of the year, you got to go through all that stuff. So, um, you know, gives guys opportunities and, 
I thought our guys stepped up big time. Uh, it wasn't the prettiest game for us on Saturday, but uh, we had a lot of guys that were, were battling a stomach bug. Uh, obviously, we had to pull our goaltender after the first period, and, you know, our guys gutted one out, and hopefully, you know, wins like that can galvanize your team a little bit. Um, so hopefully we'll see. You know, we're, we're going to go into this weekend, uh, you know, off that game, and, and uh, hopefully we can, we can build off that, like I said, and, and try and continue to get some momentum moving forward here to the end of the year. Scott, you know, if there's a, a flaw on the team, I guess, maybe maybe not scoring enough goals offensively, even on the power play. At this stage of the season, when you only have a couple weeks left, like, mm -hmm. are there areas offensively that you can improve on still at this late stage of the season? Or is it kind of, hey, we are what we are, and we got to make sure we're comfortable winning two, one, three, two games? Yeah, I, I think there are some things you can. I don't think it's going to be drastic for our team. Uh, I think, you know, our goal is to get the three. Um you know, I think you saw that Saturday. We got the three. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we got the three on Friday, but against uh, teams like Denver, they can put up more than three. <clears throat> um, but again, I think our power play has gotten better. I think we've scored a goal, one goal in the last five games. So that's a, that's a step in the right direction where that's been so hot and cold. And, you know, to be at around 17% isn't good enough. Like we, if we're at 20 to 25%, that might be two or three more goals or, you know, and more wins, right? But, uh, you know, we're going to be a defensive team. Um, we're going to have to play that way um, to, to generate uh, offense and keep games close and, and get good goaltending. And and that's just kind of our identity right now. But there but there are some things I think we can we, – we've been very streaky offensively. Um, you know, we've had some games where, you know, we've, we've scored five, six goals, and then there's games where we've scored zero or one a lot. And, and – uh, you know, I can go back to the Miami game where we had 52, 53 shots, but we only scored two goals. And, and I thought it was one of our better offensive games, but we couldn't solve the goaltender. So um, there's just had, there's just been a lot of inconsistencies. But, yes, there are some things that we're trying to work on, trying to create a little bit more of a consistency to uh, what we're doing offensively. And, and uh, it's been a little bit better. But, you know, last weekend you play a team like Denver, they have the puck a lot. So um, you're defending a lot, so you don't have, you know, maybe as much energy to play as much offense uh, when you don't have it, when you're chasing it. So um, that's something that uh, is tough against those teams. But, you know, we try and do a little bit of the same thing when, we, when we're on our game, you know, possessing the puck and trying to wear some teams down that way. You've had mm -hmm. a number of great defensemen uh, play for you at UMD. Um, the latest being Wyatt Kaiser. Talk about his game. Um, he, uh, he he's pretty fun to watch. Well, he's he's an elite skater. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously his skating ability is 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 going to help him as he moves on, right? Uh, but he's he's a great defender. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think that's probably the biggest thing that uh, <clears throat> we're really trying to get him to, to to focus on because he's a guy that's got such a high compete level. He, he's, he's great at, he's great at breaking up plays and starting transition because of his, his defensive abilities. Um, you know, the offensive part of the game is, is, is good. You know, I wouldn't put him in the Prunovich category. And I think, yeah, well, I, think somebody, yeah. I think somebody compared a little bit of that when we threw him on the power play last year as a freshman after Pruny left. And I think that was very unfair because, because why it's a different player, but, um, I just love his compete level, um, and I think his defending is elite, and I think he's got an opportunity to be one of those type guys with, with some good offense uh, moving forward. But he's he's been really good for us, um, you know. But again, they're young, right? Yeah. And they're still they're still growing, they're still maturing, they're still learning. And I think the biggest thing with those guys is just not getting too far ahead of yourself. And I think that's something <clears throat> we've tried to do with Wyatt here is just. Keep him grounded. Keep him focused on how how he can be effective for us and for himself moving forward. Uh, Scott, it seems like every year now for the last ten to fifteen years, I look at college hockey rosters and I see someone from Hermantown on a roster. <laughs> and you you got three on your team right now, including your leading scorer. Uh, obviously, you know your son is playing at Mankato. You've had Dylan Sandberg, Cole Kepke, Kyle Schmidt, Nate Pionk, Adam Kraus, Jared Thomas. So, what what is it about this this Hermantown community that not only obviously we've seen them produce at the high school level because we've seen them, you know, win state tournaments and, and be at the state tournament nonstop, but that they continue to have sex, success at the uh, college level. What is it? What what is it about this Hermantown community that they've kind of figured it out? Well, they, 
we've, we've had some good people move in with good bloodlines. I think, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know what? It's, it, it's a great setup. I mean, they do. I mean, I remember the first time I, I moved there, uh, you know, 20 years ago, I, I still remember, you know, going by the outdoor rink and, and seeing the four rinks that, uh, you know, we're all set up there and it was packed and I'm like, this is, this is awesome. Right. And, you know, Pat, we all grew up on an outdoor rink yep. and, um, you know, whether it was a pond or not, you know, we were fortunate to have one half a block. Right. And, yep. and, uh, you know, here's, here's four of them right across from all the schools and the kids get dropped off and those kids spend a lot of time there. And I think that's where they become a little bit more of that brink radish and develop some of the the skills that they have, it's not, you know, the only reason, but it's a big reason. And I think the community is, is obviously, you know, a great hockey community. Um, you know, they've had a ton of success and, you know, you can argue whether they should be double A or A, but they've had success. And, and uh, you know, again, you know, a lot of people, it's not like, it's not like they are recruiting a bunch of people. Um, you know, there's certainly people that have moved in like any community, but I, I just think the the culture there and just, what they bring and in the the admiration that the young kids have for the high school kids i think it just you know people want to people want to play there it's no different than a, a good hockey program in college right i mean people want to play there and and hopefully people feel the same way about us but we've been very fortunate right and and they've been quality kids and and uh, they've been on they've been very successful but we've we've also been picky too right i mean it's not yeah. like we're just going to go get those kids we want local kids, whether they're from Hermantown or Duluth or Cloquet or the Iron Range, because it's important for our program. And it's always it's always been that way. But, you know, we also need that mixture of of kids from other areas. But uh, it's really important and people really appreciate watching local players play. Brandon brought up your son, Ryan, uh, mm -hmm. who also went to Hermantown. Um, we have to talk about him. I mean, he's got 19 goals. I mean, that. Uh, you, you got, I mean, you, you've mm -hmm. got to be proud. I mean, you, you probably hate playing them now, but um, <laughs> what's it like? He's got, he's got bragging rights right yeah, now. He yeah, he does. No, no question. <laughs> but what's it like as a father from afar and, you know, I, keeping an eye on, on what he's doing and what Minnesota state's doing and, you know, and then coaching mm -hmm. your team, but it, it, it just must be a blast. You know, Pat, yeah, I mean, it is fun. You know, I get to see some of the games, uh, obviously uh, not as many as I'd like. I've been to one in person this year uh, when we had a bye weekend. I got to see them play Northern Michigan. I've caught some games on flow hockey. Um, you know, we, we've been off and catch maybe some games on replay. But, uh, you know, they've got a great team. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that he's being a big part of that team. I think he's, he's, he's always been a player that kind of, gets a little bit better, um, you know, each year. I think if you go back and look at even his high school year, his junior years, and even what he's doing there, he's getting more opportunity. He's taking advantage of it. And, um, you know, it's fun. Like, I mean, I think yeah. last year, obviously, he got a lot of, you know, got some notoriety because of the game-winning goal. But I think, you know, his goal has always been to go there and, and help them win a national championship because he's – been around when we've won and he he wants that for his program and, yeah and i think that's what kind of player he is and i think he's he's not there for himself he he's going to do whatever he can to to help his team and and right now he's scoring some goals and and, and helping his team that way and i think he's providing some good leadership but uh, they've got they've got a really good team and you know, obviously he was excited to, to go play for Mike and, and as a parent um, and as a colleague, uh, I was pretty excited for him to, to go. Yeah. What, their, what was their program? What was the conversation like? You know, I mean, was it, you know, between you and him uh, when it came to recruiting? Was was um, was UMD on his list? Yeah, he, you know, he came and visited. I didn't show him around. My, my, my assistants did, but uh, well, he probably showed the other recruits that you had around. You know, I still, I still remember pretty vividly. Like he went to Sioux City's camp at the end of July, and we were traveling back. And I, I thought this is a good time. We had like three hours in the airport, and because um, the camp was in St. Louis, and I said this is a good time to talk about it. And we sat down and got a caribou at the airport, and I said, well, let's talk about what you want to do. And he goes, nope. We don't need to. I already made up my decision. I just want you to be my dad. I'm going to go someplace somewhere else. So I was bummed because I had three three hours and 15 minutes to kill. Uh, yeah. You know, and I was thinking we could have a good, hey, good conversation. But, did you um, offer him a scholarship? 
And uh, no, well, it never got to that point. So, okay. um, <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm proud of him for making that decision. It right. wasn't, uh, we never really got to that conversation. So I think he's a very bright kid and he knew what he wanted and, and uh, it's worked out great for him. Yep. Is it on the games you've coached against him? Is that, that's gotta be challenging because you're cheering for your team, but you're also, you know, you want your, you always want your children to succeed yet. You're also cheering for your team to stop them. Is that a little yeah, conflicting? The, the first series, I think a couple of when his freshman, like when we played him here at Thanksgiving, that was a little awkward, you know, just, you know, playing against them and seeing them out there. And, uh, you know, I think they beat us twice again there. That was, we had some big blizzard here and, um, you know, last time, the, uh, the, this year was a little bit different, um, you know, playing them again, but just you kind of watch them a little bit, but you're so into the game, right? You're, you're yeah. focused on your team. And, you know, I did see when he got in a little bit of a scrum with one of our players and I'm like, good for our player, right? I hope he's, you know, hope he wins the battle. <laughs> not, not him, not Ryan, but, uh, yeah. you know, it's the way it is, right? I mean, it's yeah. no different than you yeah. and I battle and Mick, you know, we're going to battle. And then after the game, we're, yeah. you know, we're going to, give each other a pat and say great job. And, uh, and that's very slimmer, but it's different when you're a kid, I, I, you know, it's tough to lose. Uh, he doesn't like to lose either. And he knows that I don't like to lose. So those are, <laughs> but they're special moments at the end. And, and uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm extremely proud of what he's done. So, All right, your, final- so your, your poor wife, Wendy, she's gotta be, you know, when you, when you guys play, <laughs> you know, she's probably cheering for not. She's wearing, purple. She's, she's, she's more purple. Right. She's yeah, more purple. Yeah, <laughs> more purple. I, I, and my daughter, I think, is a little bit of both. I, I, I joke. I said the, the dog. I got the dog at home. The dog doesn't care, right? So that's about right. it. But all right, all right, Scott. Final question for you. Um, and I hope you don't give me the political answer, but I'm sure you will. Uh, you've coached for 22 seasons now. You've accomplished all you can accomplish at the college hockey level with mm-hmm. the national championships. Uh, the amount of frozen fours you've basically placed your flag in a state in which the University of Minnesota was always king and you've kind of taken over uh, in this state. Uh, Have you ever been tempted to go to the next level and and coach in the National Hockey League? Uh, Yes. You know, I've looked at it. You know, again, it's uh, it's something that I know there's a lot of coaches that have agents that are out pursuing and looking and really pushing. Um, You know, I've never really had that. Uh, I've never really had a guy that's been out you know, doing that. I mean, I've more, I've been more of the, if if they give me a call, I'll listen. Um, Certainly I really enjoy what, you know, we're doing here and I I love living in Duluth and I love college hockey. And, uh, but yes, there's certainly moments where you, you, you go, God, that'd be just like, just like a player, you know, it'd be great to have the opportunity to maybe be at the highest level and experience the highest level. So we'll see, but uh, uh, if it doesn't happen, we're, we're in a great spot here and who knows we'll, we'll see all along. We want to keep doing it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but yes, definitely. There's been, there's been some moments where that's, that's come to the forefront and, you know, but I'm, I'm pretty blessed to have the job that I do and um, I'll just keep working as hard as I can at this. Well, it's uh, worked well the last couple of seasons for you. Thank you so much for your time today, Scott, and uh, good luck this weekend versus North Dakota. Yep, thanks, guys. Appreciate see it. See you next week. Thanks. Okay, see you, Pat. All see right, ya. Scott Sandlin, the head coach of the Minnesota Duluth men's hockey team. Before I talk with uh, you, Pat, I want to mention SodaStick.com. Go to SodaStick.com to get your original Minnesota sports-inspired goods. Uh, if you haven't seen the stuff yet, you got to check it out. All of their apparel is screen-printed here in Minnesota on super soft, super comfy shirts. And you will love it. We're going to hook you up with 15% off your next order. So use the code KFN for 15% off. That is SodaStick.com, original Minnesota sports-inspired goods. Use the code KFN for 15% off your next order. Pretty candid answer there by uh, Scott Sandlin. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I I wanted to bring it up with Scott, but I didn't because I didn't want to put him on the spot. But you know I've been a big, big proponent of this, of change in college hockey. and how, for lack of a better word, unintelligent that we are. Um, we have six schools. Well, you know, St. Thomas joins so six now in the yep. state. I think it would be um, incredible if they were all in the same league, playing each other week in, week out. Um, I think buildings would be filled. I think that I think the competition would be. I mean, because every team is good now, and St. Thomas will get there. Um, 
I, I just think that we're we're making a, a, a huge mistake uh, in this sport by not by not having that and and getting some better realignment with college hockey. I'll stop. All right, I'm just going to drop you for a second here, Pat, and make sure your uh, your internet feed can get back. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, you can go to sodasick.com to get 15% off uh, your sports inspired goods. Minnesota sports inspired, inspired goods. Use the code KFN for 15% off. Hopefully, Pat sounds a little bit better now. Uh, let's talk yeah. Minnesota. Let's talk a little bit of Minnesota Wild, Pat. Okay. Uh, Matt Boldy gets the hat trick the other night against Oof. the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, um, I think you know we've we've talked about him and that line and how really that's kind of transformed Kevin Fiala, um, and we can talk about Boldy in a second. But uh, Fred Goudreau has kind of emerged a little bit recently and probably helps having Boldy and Fiala. I think there's no coincidence that those two together has kind of helped his game out. Has the play of Frederick Goudreau recently changed your opinion on the need to get a center? Um, I'll tell you more in a month. Um, I, I ultimately believe that they're going to need another veteran player in here. I, I, I really do. Um, and maybe that's not to take the place of Goudreau, but they're, they're going to need another body. I think they're going to make a deal. Um, I think they, they feel like they can make a run today. Are they a Stanley cup contender? Yes. Um, one month from now, they may not be, or they may be even more, you know, it's a gauntlet of, you know, we've talked about it, Brandon, the next month, month and a half is going to be insane. Um, you know, and that, you know, it may come down to, you know, will they acquire a goaltender? I don't. I don't think that they're going to stand pat because um, I think they realize what's ahead of them in terms of we got to resign Fiala. We, you know, Dumba's cap hits going up. There's, there's not going to be a lot. They're, they're not going to be active in the free agent market because they can't. Yeah. And um, they may realize that the opportunity is now. Uh, so, um, that being said, it's, it's, it's a godsend that Goudreau. His, his game is elevated and he's and he's and he's with a line that that is working um but i i i you know i still think that you know in a month from now we're gonna obviously know a lot more and um then they'll determine what needs they they need yeah i i just find it a little amusing pat that uh i don't know if amusing is the right word but interesting that you know a month and a half ago the, the topic was we need to get a goalie. We need yeah. to get a goalie. And, you know, both have been playing well now for quite some time. And Kakanen is playing well enough where he's basically getting a 50-50 split of this thing, Yep. Uh, at least moving forward as long as he keeps playing well. And then, you know, all right, well, the obvious obvious need is you need a center to put between Fiala and Boldy. And, and I was on that boat. And I, I still am on that boat to a certain extent. Yeah. But, you know, the good news, Pat, is, is the play of Goudreau puts Bill Guerin in a situation where you don't have to make a move, right? You still yeah. can make you still can make a move if you feel like you want to upgrade, but like you're not in desperation mode. So like you're not in a position where leading up to the trade deadline, you're gonna give up more, you're gonna pay too much because you think you have to make a move. You don't have to. So any any person you bring in, like it's gonna be the right price. You're not gonna overpay for any of these guys because well, if you're gonna ask for that much, well, I'll just stick with what I got because we're a contender with what we got. Brandon, I think you and I made the big mistake, but I'll blame you more, okay. of of bringing up that topic of who's available at center. <laughs> and so, you know, just because a big name is available, does that mean he's going to fit here? Does that mean he wants to come here? Does that mean he, you know, uh, they're, they're, you know, the, you know, a, a Giroux, a Hurdle, a Pavelski, the three big names, right? Um uh, and, and sure, and they're all great players, and I'm sure all great leaders. And but but you know, but we don't know how that that's going to work out. Um, and I and I think you and I kind of set the 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 big target for a center. Um, you know, there we're, we're like I said, we're, we're just going to have to wait and see how things play out. We didn't think or we didn't know that Boldy was going to have the impact that he had that he's had. Yeah, and all of a sudden you go from having um, one scoring line, you know, one multi, I mean, yes, you know, um, to you have, you have two. And then the third with 
you know, Erickson Eck and Felino and Greenway doing multiple things and also scoring. Oh, now you now you look like a team that is, you know, really tough to defend. And um, so it it uh, you know I'm I'm just I'm just hoping that they get through this next you know 20 games, 25 games to just so they can breathe a little bit because they won't be able to breathe for quite some time. And uh, Pat Boldy is 20 years old. Yeah. And- this this is a, this is a small stretch, right? Like you know, like Ryan Donato, his rookie year, was putting up a point per game when he came yeah. over by a trade through his first fifteen games. So we've seen, but this it looks different from Boldy. Let's be honest. I mean, he yeah. just he he does everything well, Pat. I, I mean, for a guy to be six foot three and he can still put some muscle on, to be six foot three and to be able to stick handle in small areas like that, like that just doesn't happen. Like you don't you don't see those guys out there. And you know, he's getting to the point where I always thought he'd be a top six forward. Now I'm starting to think you got a superstar on your hands because he's he's putting up Kaprizov numbers at the age of 20, and and he's so me- he's so even keeled, right? Um, his maturity level, which I think is you know, it, it first of all it's off the charts, and if you're not a mature player, um, you know you're gonna you're gonna have a lot a lot of a lot more peaks and valley, valleys. And he just seems to be okay. I'm here. I'm loving it. I'm just gonna continue to methodically play game in, game out, practice every day. Um, you know the same way to get better. Um, and and you know the moment hasn't gotten too big for him, and it does to a lot of players. And it beca- it can become too big. And he just it, he just seems to. I'm just gonna play. And let my talents come out, and that it's it's been wonderful to see. In the Western Conference, Pat, um, I think Vegas is kind of interesting. I, I, I yeah, feel like, I feel like they're one of those teams that's just kind of coasting through the regular season, and you now now they're getting Jack Eichel back, and we'll we'll see how he looks after being gone for quite some time. And they they almost seem like they're doing the Tampa Bay Lightning situation with Mark they Stone. Are. Uh, I, I have a feeling Vegas is going to be one of those teams that just coast through the regular season and come playoff time, they'll just ramp it up. You want my um, prediction for Vegas, what they're going to do? Sure. Uh, Robin Leonard got hurt. You're going to do Mark andre Fleury back? Correct. I've seen they're, that rumor, yeah. They're they're throwing uh, – they'll throw Leonard on the LTIR and bring back Fleury. Would not shock me. The money works. Um, but th- th- but they've they've got they've got some issues though. Um, you know they they've got to, you know, depending upon how long those guys are out. You know they put Stone on LTIR. I don't know if they'll keep them until the playoffs. Uh, on on that, you know they may they may have to bring them back. Uh, they may they're they're going to have to shed some salary some way somehow. I would think again, but you know who knows. Um, I, I tell you, the, the West is really, really interesting because, you know, the Central Division alone was St. Louis. Nashville, shocking us. I think um, I think Minnesota is surprising some people. And then you have the Blues. Um, it, uh, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really great playoff this year. All right, a couple college previews I would like you to give me right now. You got uh, we just talked to Scott Sandlin, UMD versus North Dakota. I think it's at up in Duluth at Amsoil. Uh, what do you expect in that series? Uh, it, it's yeah, it's it's going to be a battle. They they both kind of play the same way. North Dakota is not as offensive as they were a year ago. They lost their top line. They brought in five um, uh, players from the transfer portal. Uh, they're 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 a different team. Um, their goaltending is not great, um, but somehow they're finding a way to win. You know, they're they're second in the in the conference right now. You know, it, they, they've put themselves in a in a pretty good spot. Well, where you know they're going to get home ice. Um, UMB has a trouble has trouble scoring goals. There's there is Scott pretty much alluded to that. Their power play is not great. Um, they're gonna they're gonna have to. We're gonna to have to get the three and and not give up more than that, uh, and so it'll be it'll be a good series. Uh, your Gophers have won four in a row versus Ohio State and Penn State. Uh, no, no, they have Penn State this weekend. I'm sorry, yes. Ohio State and Michigan State. They've got Penn State at Penn State this weekend. Uh, I'm 
don't know the logisticals, but I would have a hard time believing the three guys are going to come back from Beijing yeah. uh, to be able to help out. But uh, what are your thoughts on the Gophers' last two series and how do they match <laughs> up against Penn State? Well, what, listen, I, I think we've talked about this before. Anytime a freshman comes in, it takes time. Um, you're getting acclimated to school. You're getting acclimated to a new league, a faster league, a better league, um, and bigger and stronger guys. Um, that being said, um, Minnesota started out not horrible, but not to the expectation that a lot of people thought they were going to be. Now they are playing as good as anybody in the country without the three guys that are at the Olympics. Um, their younger kids, Hugelin, Lucius, Bros, um, have been have really, I don't want to say have carried the team, uh, Pitlick. Uh, who was a uh, number two star in the in the Big Ten last week? Um, those four Is guys. Is he going to play for the Canadians someday? Um, yeah, <laughs> all three of them, right? They got all the picks. Yeah, yeah. So their younger guys are are not freshmen anymore, and they are not playing like it. And I forgot Matthew Nice, right? He's at he's at the Olympics. He's another freshman. Um, he was a little bit ahead of the curve, but um, they they those those guys have really accelerated now and uh, Minnesota is going to be a tough out. They are going to be a tough out come playoff time. Yeah. They've emerged uh, in the pairwise rankings as well, moving up yep. a little bit and putting them in a little bit of a comfort zone. So uh, Pat, great stuff as always. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Brandon. Have a great week. All right. He's Pat McLeod. I'm Brandon Molesky. This has been beyond the pod brought to you by sodastick.com. As always, I would like to remind you that you can subscribe to the KFN YouTube channel if you want to watch this podcast. And of course, you can listen to it on the iHeartRadio app and wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you could as well. Uh, we'll talk to you next week on Beyond the Pod. Bye.